Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, this is SP3. This is True Hill Heat. Uh, this is a special live stream. I uh, did not plan this out in advance. This is something very last minute. Um, we're here to talk about and remember one of my all-time favorites. Um, I'm a huge Ring of Honor fan, and I've told this story a couple of times here on the channel, here in different you know platforms that I've been on. That as a what was I, 17, 16 year old kid in high school, lifetime wrestling fan, I discovered Ring of Honor on like a YouTube where I heard a lot of the the, the hype about Joe versus Punk and Joe versus Kobashi. And as a active kid at that time who was getting kind of disenchanted with WWE being the only game in town, the only big promotion around, I, I needed something new to kind of find my my love for wrestling again. And Ring of Honor brought that back to me. And in through those like YouTube videos that they used to post and uh, different like roster videos they used to do, I discovered two brothers from Delaware who would wear Confederate flags to the ring. And there was something about them that just, uh, you know, really drove me to them, created a connection from just those little YouTube videos. And then I always tell the story, my first independent wrestling show that I ever went to live, the first wrestling event I think I ever went to, uh, you know, without like a parent or even like a boss from work or anything like that. It was Ring of Honor Final Battle 2006 with my good friend Marcus Cash, who you've seen on the channel before. And the best match of that night, the, the, the match that everybody was there for was homicide versus brian danielson for the ring of honor world championship but the match that impressed me the most and made me instantly a fan of the people in the ring was the briscoes versus the kings of wrestling and yesterday evening around past 8 30 p.m we got the news that jay briscoe at the age of 38 years old passed away in a car accident um you know more information is coming out as we speak there's been you know the state police uh incident report that's been released but i'm not here to talk about that stuff i'm just here to remember someone who made a quite a mark on me as a professional wrestling fan and i can honestly say this death in the wrestling world i've taken harder than anything I cried when I found out the news. I was working, writing on the WrestleTalk.com website, and I was going to cover something on NXT, and my editor immediately messaged me that Tony Khan just tweeted out that Jay Briscoe had passed away. Um, the T, I'll put on the screen here. Uh, Tony Khan tweeted out last night, sadly, Jamin Pugh, has passed away. Known to fans as Jay Briscoe, he was a star in ROH for over 20 years from the first show until today. Jay and his brother Mark dominated ROH, reigning as champions to this day. We'll do whatever we can to support his family. Rest in peace, Jamin. So that was the official announcement from Tony Khan and over the last 24 hours, there has been so much of an outpour of love, support from those, you know, inside the wrestling community, the wrestlers that we all think, you know, are larger than life athletes and performers. They've really been showing, you know, their vulnerability and opening up about what Jay Briscoe meant to them. So that's what I'm like made this stream for is for, you know, us here at True Hill Heat. I invited, you know, anyone who was free from the team. I've invited people on social media. You see, you could see the posts on my Twitter page. If anyone wants to join me and wants to talk about it, you know, it's best to, to come together in times like this, but it's just when you lose someone, this sudden in the wrestling community and this was the first time you know I, i've taken other wrestling devs hard because they represent kind of my 
coming into as a friend as a fan of professional wrestling like the macho man when he passed away in 2011 or eddie guerrero in 2005 but this was actually the first time that i actually knew the wrestler and actually like when the tweet went out and i saw the tweet and you know having to write it on a website because that was my job to do and you know my editor shout out to him uh liam from russell talk who was very understanding because i kind of shared with him kind of my experience in actually going to ring of honor events for the better part of the past 15 16 years and i have met jay mark their kids papa briscoe mama briscoe cousins they have the huge family and i've been had the privilege the honor to be next to them at events whether it's war of the worlds 2014 whether it was super card of honor in 2013 all the way up until like 2018 at the hammerstein ballroom being there final battle 2018 saying hi to papa briscoe before the briscoes won ladder war against scu and the young bucks so it, it like hit me hard and then it hit me even harder. I cried when I found out the news and, you know, tried to compose myself. And then I realized, tried to go back onto like Facebook and see old pictures that I had with, you know, friends that I've lost touch with who took pictures with the Briscoes. And then I found a picture of myself and one of my best friends, my former roommate, G, shout outs to him. And I saw that picture and I remembered that day that weekend it was supercard of honor 2013 weekend i was just supposed to go to the tv taping the night after supercard of honor but my boy g he doesn't have social media he, he he doesn't take the train a lot he stays in the bronx so i was responsible with getting him from the bronx to hammerstein ballroom for supercard of honor with our good brother mike martin uh who got a ticket for g and i was standing online with g waiting for mike to come then mike comes and him and g convinced me to get a ticket as well and it was someone outside selling a ticket it was like a whole bunch of you know people who was out there that was the wrestlemania 29 weekend that was the first weekend i ever went to a wrestlemania and one of the guys outside basically gave me a ticket for a balcony seat so i can go to supercard of honor and Thank God for someone like, you know, G, Mike, and that guy outside because Supercard of Honor 2013 is probably, especially after what we, you know, losing Jay is probably my favorite wrestling memory that I've ever been to live because I got to witness Jay Briscoe and the embodiment of Ring of Honor, someone who was on Ring of Honor shows since the very first show when he was barely 18 years old, the first match ever in ring of honor and to see you know from me becoming a ring of honor fan and seeing the briscoes win all these tag team titles and then you know being there and witnessing the moment when he hits the j driller on kevin steen and becomes the ring of honor world champion for the first time ever there's clips you can see it online on social media you can see it on youtube it's like euphoria it was just like an out of body experience where I was hugging people that I had never met in my life before. I was just so genuinely happy. It was the end of the Kevin Steen era of scum had taken over ring of honor and the hero was a guy that a lot of people just saw as a tag team specialist, as a tag team wrestler. But this guy through and through embodied what ring of honor was embodied what professional wrestling was because he worked and worked and worked his ass off when he wasn't even supposed to be wrestling at barely 18 years old mark wasn't even able to wrestle on the first couple of shows back in 2002 for ring of honor and you know they, they created a great story from there in the early shows go back to 2002 and jay and mark 18 17 years old it's just like yeah, I will never forget that moment seeing him win the Ring of Honor World Championship and then to 
think about all the different times, whether it be the day after he won wins the Ring of Honor World Championship and me and G actually got to speak to him at a meet and greet and take a picture with him. And, you know, I posted the picture on social media and I'll put it up here and we got to tell him like how how amazing it was to watch him win the big one, win the world title and just how happy we were for him because we knew how he worked so, so hard. And I, I also been posting on social media, a lot of the, the promos, these, the promos that the Briscoes did in like 2010, 2011, 2012, it made people ring of honor fans. Like I had the privilege to come into ring of honor when I feel like it was at his peak 2005, 2006, uh, you know, and been a fan ever since then. But a lot of my friends that I'm still friends with today, I had to like, like G, like others, I showed them promos like the Briscoe's day one promo, which, you know, I've gone on and made debates that I felt like a lot of other tag teams have watched the Briscoe's promo work and ring work and copied them. But like that promo, the cosmetically pleasing promo against the world's greatest tag team, uh, Terry Funk never, never wore a mouthpiece. I've never heard a tag team or a guy like Jay Briscoe who can be both intimidating, uh, feel so real with everything he says. You, you 100% believed everything that he was saying out of his mouth and just the genuineness. And then he was also hilarious at all at the same time, like the cosmetically pleasing promo. I, I rewatched it, you know, this morning and I shared it with my friends and hearing them be like, Jennifer Hudson, my ass, David Otunga, David Otunga, Jennifer Hudson, you were better when you were fat, man. Ah, uh, man, <laughs> it's funny to like go back and watch and like, he's, he was so good at everything, promos tag team wrestling singles wrestling trios i just can't like believe that lost him in the way that we did a car accident and of course i gotta you know send my prayers my thoughts all of us here at true hill he myself included my family my friends everyone we we all the whole wrestling community of course is sending our love our prayers our thoughts to the Pew family and, you know, his daughters, his 12 year old daughter, Jay Lee, um, his wife, Ashley, who has to, you know, be there for his, both his nine year old daughter and 12 year old daughter who are in critical condition. One of their daughters has to have emergency surgery on her back. And then you also think about the fact that today is Mark Briscoe's birthday. And these brothers are one year apart. So when they say day one, they it's crazy. They're one year apart, like almost to a day, like a week apart, because Jay's birthday is next week. It's it's crazy. I want to, you know, highlight a bunch of your comments. Everyone in the chat has been, you know, showing their love and support. CM. Uh, we got Christopher Eubanks saying reach for the sky boy. Uh, thank you. We got frantic world who says, what's up SP three and chat. I still can't believe it. And yeah, that was like the main thing for me. I, I wasn't really able to process it because like I said, I was on the clock. I'm working and, you know, I know my job is to report on the news, but like it was tough to write out that one of the guys that I actually had experiences with can pinpoint every single time I met him or Mark in 2012 after a Ring of Honor event, Mark was, you know, we used to hang out in front of Hammerstein Ballroom and to wait for the wrestlers to come out. And one time Mark came out with his kid, one of his, one of his kids, when they were just a baby, they were actually in the car seat and he still went out of his way to take pictures with fans. And I was one of those fans and he told me to hold the car seat in the picture. So I actually got to hold one of uh, Jay's uh, niece or nephew. And then all the times I, I see uh, my good brother, 
John, Johnny is in the chat. He says, I remember rooting for the Briscoes and standing right next to Papa Briscoe at a show in 2014. His enthusiasm was infectious. I saw right there where them thoughts, uh, them boys got it from. Thoughts and love to the Briscoe family. Yeah, 100%. It was, <laughs> we were right there. We were right there. It was War of the Worlds, uh, 2014, Johnny. I remember that. That uh, that was the first time that I went to Hammerstein and taught <laughs> And taught Johnny the, the Hammerstein ballroom uh, rules that me and G and our boy Steve Stash created uh, back in 2011. Of you get a balcony ticket because it's only going to cost you like twenty twenty five dollars, and then if you you know get your legs ready because if you want to get the better seat, you just go down to the floor, you stand on the floor, and I kept doing that every single time and. Nine times out of 10, I would always wind up next to Papa Briscoe. And I remember a few times where Papa Briscoe would tell me and G, like, just stand next to me, guys. Just stand next to me. Uh, he, was like, he was like, I know you don't got a seat down here. Just stand next to me. And he was just such a genuine professional wrestling fan, not just for, you know, the Briscoe matches. He would be involved in cheering for all the matches for all the guys and that love for professional wrestling you saw it even in their parents I remember meeting mama briscoe and for the first time and i was like oh, the first time meeting her and stuff and she just she was just shaking my hand and meeting the family meeting the kids meeting cousins they always rolled deep to new york it was crazy it was it was it was great to see like how much love that family has and that's why I, that's why i'm gonna keep pleading with everyone in the wrestling community that we need to send our love to that family because they're so close knit. And I know this, this has to be, you know, if I'm taking it hard, if y'all are taking it hard, it's even harder for them. So man, uh, frantic world saying, I remember watching an ROH pay-per-view and they show a clip of the Briscoes versus age of the fall. That's when I really got into ROH. I was actually at that show. Uh, ROH Final Battle 2007. I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Johnny went with me to that one too. Uh, Final Battle 2007. I remember that one because that was the night that the Briscoes put over the Age of the Fall. And I really became a fan of Tyler Black, who would later become Seth Rollins uh, in WWE. And I have a couple of tweets that I wanted to, you know, highlight from all the amazing tributes that we've seen for Jay Briscoe in the past, you know, 12, 12 to 18 hours since his passing. And um, Seth was one of them. Seth, Seth Rollins, uh, he had a couple of tweets that he uh, put out there in regards to Jay because he has a he has a long history with Jay. And the fact of the matter is that if it wasn't for Jay Briscoe, Seth Rollins probably doesn't become Seth Rollins because that age of the fall versus Briscoe's feud was very influential in making, making him a star. And he put out, you know, his tweets earlier today. Um, I, I think, I think the, they're, they're out of order, but these are some of the, he put out three consecutive tweets. He says, Jay was one of those people who was always legitimately happy to see you. He had a twinkle in his eye and hug waiting for me, no matter how long we went without seeing each other. I'm crushed knowing that warmth is gone. My thoughts are with his family and friends. He was special. That's what so many people have said in the past few hours is how special Jay was and how, you know, his smile, his warmth, his affection meant a lot to the people around him. Uh, he talks about Seth Rollins also put out the tweet. This was the first tweet that he put out. Actually, he says, being in the ring with Jay Briscoe got me my first ROH contract. He and Mark being so selfless helped Jimmy and me and Jimmy and I find our footing as age of the fall. Without him, I don't know if Tyler Black could ever have been Seth Rollins. He also put out this third tweet saying that after I signed with WWE, Jay would come to the Salisbury uh, house shows to drink beer and to hoot and holler. He loved the business and he was a great human and friend. Bigger than that, he was an absolutely adoring father and husband. And... 
that's the that's the thing that like breaks my heart is being a father and I, I I will tell you, and my missus will confirm all day today. I've been hugging my kids. I've been hugging her, telling them how much I love them because it, it really makes you kind of <laughs> take a step back and realize how much love you got for the people around you. And I want to commend uh, uh, Sober Guy JJ, Jaquan, and Chris G yesterday being on this channel during NXT when – Honestly, I will tell you guys, I tried to watch NXT because I was covering it for the Wrestle Talk website, but that was truly the hardest day I've ever had to work, whether doing this, whether doing writing. I've worked on Vince McMahon's retirement day, and I thought that was the craziest day I've ever been through, but th that was the toughest for sure, was the, the last night. Uh, and Johnny confirming what I said before, yes, Final Battle 2007 was my first ROA show. I remember because well, that's uh, our bond and why me and Johnny have been friends for as many years as we have is that we were both wrestling fans at Victoria's Secret along with Top Guy JJ. And that was kind of like the, the first the first like step into the pool of going to a wrestling event together. And that was Final Battle 2007. At Man, it was just a great show, and it ends with you know Seth Seth Rollins, who was then Tyler Black, and Jimmy Jimmy Jacobs, the Age of the Fall, defeating the Briscoes for the ROH World Tag Team Titles. I was pissed at that time. I won't front. I was not an Age of the Fall fan. I was firmly, firmly in the uh, in the in the house of being a fan of the Briscoes at that point, but. It's, it's crazy to to remember that type of stuff and how long I've had like Jay Briscoe as a professional wrestler interacted with his families 15, 16 years. It's a long time, very long time. Uh, Stephen Chambers saying RIP Jay Briscoe reaching for the sky in heaven, prayers to his family, friends, and fans. Yes, indeed, for sure. Uh, we also got, uh, uh, yeah, we also got Johnny bringing up for, for God. Uh, this was a damn beauty pageant. Uh, yes, those Risco promos, man, those are timeless stuff. Go out of your way. If you just want to like smile and celebrate the life of Jay Briscoe, there's so much content that I discovered today on YouTube of classic matches. I watched the Briscoes versus the Motor City Machine Guns back at uh, ROH, ROH, uh, good times, good, great memories. I have a full list that I will kind of go through of like what I say is like the, the essential list of must watch Jay Briscoe, Briscoe matches for you to watch that I posted on the True Hill Heat uh, Twitter page. I'll go through s some of those matches because I've been having to go out of my way and find them. I think I'm going to take the bullet and get an honor club uh, subscription and be able to kind of rewatch everything, kind of absorbed everything from Jay's career with the Briscoes, as well as as a single star. We got DJ Eric in the chat. He says, I got to work with Jay Briscoe at an ROH show in 2011, and it was phenomenal because he treated me and everyone else like we were family. Yes. And that's been the biggest thing that everybody has said is that how he treated everyone equal, despite some people wanting to hold past comments and past views that he's had and not take into account all the apologies that he has made, all the reforms that he has made and the way he has treated people of that, that, you know, and the, of the LGBTQ plus community, the main one was uh, Effie, I believe, uh, put out a post talking about how Jay treated him like everyone else, treated him like family. And that's how he treated everyone around him. And that means a lot. Uh, we also got in the chat here, like like I said, guys, um, you know, I, I know the, the state police incident report has come out. And I know there's, you know, there's some people that, it was it was saddening to find out that Jay wasn't wearing you know his seatbelt at the time. I'm I'm not here to talk about the the incident report. The most I will talk about it is bringing up you know to keep in your heart and in your prayers Jay's daughters who are in critical condition. That's the most important part that I just want to you know 
very emphasized from the incident report. I'm not here to go into detail or give my views on, you know, seatbelt awareness or anything like that, honestly. Uh, CM says the Briscoes were one of the teams I prayed weren't racist because of the gimmick, because they dope as fuck. Him being gone is just wow. Yeah. And I, I will tell you, as a as a wrestling fan who sometimes I would go to the meet and greet and pay money to meet them. And like I said, being a New Yorker who at the Hammerstein Ballroom, there wasn't a lot of places for the guys to get out. They had to get out either through the parking lot or through the front entrance. And the Briscoes were the type to just go through the front entrance. And so many times I would interact with Mark and Jay and their families and Papa Briscoe outside of the Hammerstein Ballroom. and None of those times did I ever get the feeling that they were racist, that they had anything against me, that they had any type of prejudice against me. I don't know what they did in their personal lives, but me as a professional wrestling fan, whenever I showed them love, they showed it back to me. So that's the only thing I could say for sure about that. Uh, DJ Eric saying, I love all my THH family and we love you too, good brother as well. Uh, e Vampire in the chat saying, Final Battle 2021 was the first ROH pay-per-view I saw. Their match with the Kingdom made me jealous of hardcore fans. I'm glad I watched their Impact Wrestling run and the FTR, the FTR trilogy, Reach for the Sky, boy. Yep. I mean, wrestling fans have been blessed in the past year since Final Battle 2021 when the when the ROH proper closed down shop. They and this happened, you know, it closed down shop even before Final Battle in in October 2021. You know, ROH releases all the talent from their contract, so people were able to go out and explore. And I'll never forget watching GCW Fight Club in October 2021 and the shock, the surprise, and the joy of seeing the Briscoes come out in GCW challenge second gear crew and the run they had in GCW over the past you know year was was great to watch because it was back in that independent wrestling vibe a lot of that independent wrestling vibe that you know Ring of Honor had had been gone for a long time, whether it be in 2009 when they went to HD Net and they were on the Mark Cuban station, as uh, Jay said in one of his promos. You don't have to need, you don't have to have satellite and the Mark Cubans to get to to watch us now. When they went to uh, Sinclair Broadcasting, and it, the the feel of the independence of Ring of Honor was kind of taken away a little bit, and it became you know less independent when it went to Sinclair Broadcasting as well but to see them back in that independent vibe the roar of the crowd in those intimate arenas again for gcw that was great they're great matches with the second gear crew matthew justice and uh mance warner great matches with bussy they were the team that put over bussy bussy won their gcw world tag team titles against the briscoes they had the high incident the scaffold match with the second gear crew when in when in the are uh, they were the in the main event of GCW's first show in the Hammerstein ballroom and I was there live to see the Briscoes back in the Hammerstein in the main event. Man, it's just it's tough to kind of but I, I am I am happy and hopeful that you know wrestling fans that they wrestling fans were able to discover the Briscoes in the past year, and that's great. That's honestly great. And, but they have so much history that you can just go back and watch and really appreciate now that he's gone. Maybe that you didn't appreciate as much when he was still here. It's best to always celebrate these people when they are gone. Good brother, Judge Delaney in the chat saying, oh, man, this, this shit hurts bad. Jay Briscoe for fucking ever. Absolutely. Uh, Judge was there. He was in a lot. He was there at a lot of the shows that I talk about in the ROH in the early 2010s. He was, he was there. He, he was, you know, he was one of the people that I met from ROH shows. So I know like all my, my friends that I met from Ring of Honor shows, whether it be in New York, whether it be in Philly, I know they really, you know, feel it today uh and dj eric letting it be known for sure tell your your family friends etc you love them because you're not promised tomorrow the next day etc never ever take 
life for granted. And that's what I've been kind of preaching. I said that in the chat last night during NX3 to the guys that I love each and every person that, you know, each and every person you see on this channel, they're not just people that, you know, I saw that can talk about wrestling that I wanted them to be contributors. I didn't discover a lot of these people from podcasts or anything like that. These were every single person you see on this channel from, from, Top Guy JJ, Baby Slav, Miss Chrissy Love, Romeo, Josh, Chris G, Jaquan, Ness, J News, Jimmy, Marcus Cash, Stephanie Hypes, Wendy, like each and every person I love, I appreciate, and I hope they know that they're my family. Like I don't, friends is your chosen family, and I appreciate each and every one of them, and regardless of what happens, they need to know that. So they can go back and watch this, you know, remember Jay Briscoe, but always for the people that I love and I appreciate my family, like I've been saying, my twins, my my woman, my, my, my love, my life, Tia, I love them all. And I've been really kind of stuff like what happened last night with Jay makes you really learn to appreciate and let the people you know that you love, let them know that immediately as soon as you can uh we had uh baby stuff saying i was fucking with asia the fall for sure back then yes because we used to always say baby seth was uh jimmy jacobs we always said that he was he was our jimmy jacobs and <laughs> he was he was the, he was the jimmy jacobs clone he's been the matt hardy clone he's been the baby seth clone we we, we we've called johnny so many different wrestlers if you if you're skinny skinny pale skin and got long black hair We've called Johnny that. We've called Johnny baby something of that. <laughs> Love you, good brother. Uh, yes, CM saying, let's watch him. I'm, I watch him all. Like I said, you can see it on uh, you know social media right now. It's on the True Hill Heat uh, Twitter page, the must-watch matches. But I'll, I'll name a couple here before I go through the rest of your comments. Uh, this is just the first few that I remembered. Uh, you can go back further to like 2002 with, you know, Jay and Mark at uh, Honor and ROH in Boston when they finally had their one-on-one -on -one match when Mark was finally able and eligible to compete uh, in Ring of Honor when they found a, a city that a 17-year-old Mark could wrestle in in 2002. They wrestled for the first time. You can go back to those. You can go back to the matches with AJ Styles and amazing in red they've had earlier matches with the second city uh saints and the prophecy but these are the just a few that came to my mind when i was just going through a list and i went through like what is this one two three four five six seven eight eight tweets eight tweets of matches that i said are essential you can you can pick a tweet and go through a year or something like that but i put jay briscoe versus samoa joe inside of a steel cage this was that that was the match that i saw on you know youtube and daily motion back before i even went to a ring of honor event because i was like i gotta see you know some classic matches and i used to go on like the chat room forums and they told me jay versus joe is one of the bloodiest ring of honor matches of all time and when you talk about a bloodbath you know people are talking about and getting up in arms about ruby soho's bloody face on aew rampage last week go back and watch this match with jay briscoe and it's like a, a split image of how bloody Ruby was, Jay was as bloody in this steel cage match, and Joe absolutely mauled that young man. And I, I believe at that time, Jay was only uh, 19, 20 years old. So he, he mauled that young man. He, he mauled a person before they were even legal to drink. Uh, you got the Briscoes versus the Second City Saints. Best two out of three falls. The Second City Saints is, in fact, the scorned uh, best friends nowadays, but they were best friends in 2004 of Colt Cabana and CM Punk. This was on July 23rd, 2004, another match that I saw on YouTube, actually, because I actually went and searched it up. You can find it on YouTube, but the Briscoes versus Second City Saints, best two out of three falls, and it's right on YouTube. Great match from all four men involved, and you saw the chemistry and what was one of the essential first like major tag team feuds in Ring of Honor. Uh, I went Ring of Honor. Uh, 
the Briscoes versus G- Generation Next of Austin Aries and Roderick Strong from ROH Unified. This one is a classic tag team matchup. And in my mind, one of the best ROH World Tag Team match world tag team title matches of all time a lot of people won't mention it because it's on the same show as one of the greatest ring of honor matches of all time of nigel mcginnis versus brian danielson with the pure title and the roh world championship up for grabs but this is a hell of a semi-main event all four guys worked their asses off but the briscoes really showed me here this was one of the earlier matches that i saw from the briscoes and i was instantly hooked and i was like man they just have they just move together they know where the other person is going to be they hit these tag team moves where it looks like you're just they're just going to hit just a regular move like the 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 razor's edge and then mark comes in and hits the neck breaker at the same time and it becomes a double team just the way they move it was just so smooth and great and then i also put the briscoes versus the kings of wrestling the one i brought up before the roh final battle 2006 match that stole the show honestly uh it stole the show in my opinion i felt like this was the best match on that card it wasn't the best with storytelling psychology and emotion because it had homicide and brian danielson on the same card but this was just as great a match that i was reminded of that is not in the tweet as well was from my first roh uh, DVD that I ever purchased from Ring of Honor, Glory by Honor, 2006. That show is top to bottom, one of the greatest Ring of Honor shows of all time. You got the main event of Brian Danielson versus Kenta for the ROH World Championship, a classic when it comes to Ring of Honor fans. You, when you say Danielson versus Kenta, they always will remember that one. You had the semi-main event of Nigel McGuinness versus uh, Mayor Fuji. For the GAC Heavyweight Championship, such a great match on there. But uh, David Bixon fan brought it up how not a lot of people will bring up this matchup, but the Briscoes versus Samoa Joe and Homicide. This was when the Briscoes were associated with Jim Cornette and representing that Southern, that uh, old school mentality against the kind of the the baby faces who represented that era of independent wrestling and Samoa Joe and Homicide. Homicide of course being the main draw of ire from jim Cornette and the briscoes briscoes having that long history with samoa joe from that feud back in 2004 and then all of that coming into play with the feud with the longtime feud and bitter feud between homicide and samoa joe two enemies teaming up together to go against a common enemy great stuff in that match it tells a great story and it plays off all the guys history and then the, the last one that i had in this first tweet was Jay versus Mark from ROH fifth year festival finale because they the for the fifth year of Ring of Honor they did multiple events they did a show in New York that had Samoa Joe versus uh Morishima for the first time which was a an amazing hoss fight if you ever seen one but then you know during the fifth year festival on one of the shows the briscoes actually lost the ring of honor world tag team titles and jay and mark decided that on the fifth year festival finale they were going to go at it and it's an absolute brawl so emotional between the two brothers anytime they were in the ring together they never held back you talk about you know with wrestlers you always hear when you're in there with your like best friend you're going to go hard we see it all the time with the kevin owens and Sami Zayn or sean John Michaels and Triple H. Nothing is like two brothers going at it and not stopping and full throttle bringing that hard hitting action. Jay and Mark did that every time they were in the ring with together. But the first one that stands out in my mind between their battles is fifth year festival finale. Do want to co- highlight a couple of your more comments here. Keep those comments coming because this is, like I said, this is a stream for all of us to kind of start the healing process. Remember Jay and just come together as a wrestling community. Frantic World saying it felt like the wrestlers industry took a moment to show their love and support to Jay Briscoe and his family. Absolutely. We got Ray who says Terry Funk ain't need no, no mouthpiece great promo go out of your way just put terry funk ain't need no mouthpiece in your youtube search bar that's another one to watch uh cm says they were the two i believe were trying to improve and learn i appreciated that yeah you could see that in a lot of ways that they have been trying to learn and adapt to the world that they're in you know you we can't always hold 
every person's mistake. We are, we are human. We are not perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. I know if you went through my social media in my lifetime, I've said a lot of stupid stuff on my social media, but I've learned and adapted and I realized I was wrong and I will apologize to the people I've offended in my lifetime for anything that I've said that I, that crossed the line, but you have to learn and you have to learn to forgive as well. Um, we also got Baby Seth, Johnny in the chat saying, I hate that the world didn't let them live down a damn misguided tweet after they have done nothing but make amends. Good on TK for trying, though. Yes, it is unfortunate. I know there's some people that retweeted the Tony Khan tweet when he um, announced the death of Jay Briscoe and didn't even take the time to, you know, have condolences. They wanted to get on Tony Khan for not allowing the Briscoes onto AEW television. And it's just like, one, that's not in his control. Two, Warner Brothers Discovery. Anyway, um, that's not in his control, and it's unfortunate that we weren't able to see them on TNT, on TBS. I wish we could have, but at the end of the day, that we got three incredible, incredible matches this past year with FDR on ROH pay-per-views, and I know that's going to live in people's memories for a long time. CM saying ROH without the Briscoes doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. I don't... <sighs> I don't know how ROH can be ROH without the Bris without Jay, without the Briscoes. And you know, Mark's gonna hopefully Mark will continue wrestling and you know continue a legacy for this family and for his brother. And I hope that Mark has all the success. And like I've been saying, I've said this morning when you know today is Mark's birthday love mark and like i said a lot of the matches that i listed are jay and mark together so i just want the whole wrestling world to just pray for mark because this has to be the worst birthday that you could possibly imagine the the brother who was not just your brother that was your best friend that was your the person you felt like twins in a lot of ways i know a lot of people that thought jay and mark were twins so all heart our love to to jay and mark we got the good sister, Cresta Star, saying R.I.P. Jay Briscoe. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got Ray who says they wore Confederate flags on their gear, but their original ROH uh, theme was a Nas song. Shit was confusing. <laughs> yes, it was. It was. I did love giving back my bullets. And that's why I was so happy when they went to GCW and had give me back my bullets. Uh let us get oh man give me back my bullets it's just when i hear that song i autumn i don't think about the artist i don't think about singing it at a karaoke bar none of that shit i think about the briscoes when i hear give me back my bullets or reach for the sky boy um to saying it was the last time i saw jay briscoe teaming with his brother mark facing ftr in a dog collar match at final battle pay-per-view to 2022 that match was awesome all three of those matches are just going to live in people's minds forever, forever. No one will ever forget this trilogy with the Briscoes ever again. Uh, Frantic World saying it was crazy. The Briscoes had back-to-back -back matches in one night. They did that multiple times, uh, Frantic World. It wasn't just one time that the Briscoes had multiple matches in one night. I've seen it. Johnny in the chat, he's been to shows where we've seen it a bunch of times as well. Uh, love you love you romeo love everything you do here on the channel and just you being a great friend man i just want to let you know that i know we always like to play up we're rivals and everything but nothing but love for you brother uh dj eric saying jay and mark briscoe's is was and always will be the heart of roh one thousand percent couldn't put it better myself uh johnny also saying love you too brother yes indeed uh we got mets champion saying salute to jay briscoe one love thank you for joining us appreciate you joining us in the chat sir uh ray bringing up some classic matches himself saying uh motor city machine guns roh good times great memories i love that match i have that match i have the dvd in my apartment back in the bronx and i love that match that 
match was like a dream to me. It was a mind trip to me because TNA and ROH, from the moment I became an ROH fan, this was post the Rob Feinstein saga. So I did not know that AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels, guys like that, were also in Ring of Honor. And just to find that, you know, they allowed a TNA tag team that was made in TNA of Chris Saban and Alex Shelley, the Motor City Machine Guns, and they were allowed to have this one match with the Briscoes. And this was actually a part, I believe, of a pay-per-view, but they didn't allow, or it was going to be a part of a pay-per-view, but they wouldn't allow it to be aired. You had to get the DVD to watch this match. And I went out of my way to get this DVD. And oh my God, this match is timeless. I watched it earlier today. It's up on YouTube. It's on Ring of Honor's YouTube channel. Go out of your way to watch that. Motor City Machine Guns, one of the most influential tag teams of all time. And so was the Briscoes. Two legendary tag teams going at it in their prime in 2007. And I want to say, the Briscoes 2007 is one is one of the greatest years of any tag team ever. People will bring up FTR in 2022, or you'll bring up the, the Young Bucks in 2021, or Young Bucks in 2019, or Young Bucks in 2018, or Young Bucks in 2017. People will bring up maybe the, the Usos last year, or bring up uh, the New Day Uso feud from 2017. They'll bring up the, you know, the TLC3 of the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, and um, the Hardys or bring up all the great years the Hardys or the Dudleys had themselves or Legion of Doom back in the, the 80s when they were the Road Warriors or the Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express. I say the Briscoes 2007 stands up to any of that because you have the classic match with the Motor City Machine Guns at Good Times, Great Memories. You got the aforementioned Age of the Fall match at ROH Final Battle 2007 that I brought up earlier that I was there live for. But a lot of my earliest memories of Ring of Honor events was 2007 and seeing one of the greatest tag team views you will ever see in your lifetime. The Briscoes versus Kevin Steen and El Generico. That feud will always live in my mind. When people ask me, what's the greatest tag team feud you have ever seen? I will bring up, you know, FTR versus the Briscoes. I'll bring up uh, Young Young Bucks, uh, many classic feuds and rivalries and matches that they had. I'll bring up Edge, Christian, the Hardys, and the Dudleys. I'll bring up Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express. I will also put in that conversation the Briscoes versus Kevin Steen and El Generico. And that brings me to opportunity to show what Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens kind of said in their uh, statements and their tributes to Jay Briscoe on social media. Sami Zayn was first earlier today putting out the tweet saying, I don't have the words right now to properly convey my sorrow. I love Jay and Mark Briscoe. Always have. I wouldn't be here without them. I'm very lucky to have shared the ring and shared so many laughs with Jay Briscoe, and I'm so sad to know neither will happen again. RIP, my friend. And then just shortly before I went live here, I was able to get uh, see the tweet from Kevin Owens where he went and he had like a Google Notes. So I'll put up the notes here so you can read it yourself while I read along with it, where he said, I spent hours reading what people had to say about Jamin last night. I watched some of our matches together. I went back and I read our last text to each other. I'm so heartbroken for his family, every single one of them that I met over the years. And I met a lot of them because they all stuck together like glue. All special human beings that would give you the shirt off their back in a heartbeat if you needed it. That's who Jamin was too. There are a few people in this industry that I consider pillars of my own career, people I truly feel I would not be where I am today had I not encountered them. Jay and Mark Briscoe are two of those pillars. He goes on to say, and talking about that, that classic rivalry with the Briscoes, he says, in 2007, they had the opportunity to make or break two Canadian guys that were trying to put themselves on the map on the U.S. indie scene. I remember walking up to Jay that afternoon before our match and asking what he wanted to do. Never met him before. First interaction we ever had. He heard my question, looked at me, and with a huge smile across his face said, well, shit, man, let's go out there and fucking kill it. 
So we did. We did that night, and we did many times after that. Each match I had with them stands out in my memory among the thousands of matches I've had in my career because working with the Briscoes was special every single time. Having the honor of being in the ring with Jay and his entire family as they celebrated after he beat me for the ROH title is my favorite memory of my independent career, bar none. It was special for all of them, for the crowd there that night, for everyone in the locker room, and for me, because Jay was special. I didn't get to see Jamin much after I went to WWE in 2014. In fact, I think we only saw each other once, but it was like no time had passed at all. He came to see a WWE show, and of course, he had his whole family with him. He was an excited and he was so excited and proud to tell me about everything his kids and his wife were up to and how great they were doing. He loved his family with everything he had. It was amazing to see them all. And then finally, Kevin Owens says, we didn't keep in touch very often, but every time we did, it absolutely made my day. Getting a text message from him was always like a giant ray of sunshine. I'm so thankful that I got to have him in my life. I'm so thankful for the laughs and the memories. Just so thankful to have known him. I'm a better person for having had the chance to. My heart goes out to Ashley and the kids, to Mark and his parents, and to everyone else that knew and loved him. That's a lot of fucking people. <laughs> Because Jay was special. Couldn't say it better myself. Definitely couldn't say it better myself. Uh, we got another comment here. Uh, I don't know about that one. Uh, Ray says, Jay versus Adam Cole, Final Battle 2014. I was actually at that event once again with baby Seth. Uh, see, that's the message from the wife telling me it's about time for me to come to my family. But uh, Jay versus Adam Cole, Final Battle 2014. I was there live for that one as well. And I sat on the floor at uh, Terminal 5 because Terminal 5 is one of the worst buildings for wrestling to be in. But I didn't care because Jay Briscoe versus adam cole was in the main event fight without honor classic matchup uh this is one of the later choices later mentions versus pco brody king at an the anniversary show in 2019 another great match another classic match versus dragon lee and roosh uh we also got J johnny saying uh, my wife then girlfriend still remembers seeing them for the first time at manhattan mayhem 2019 on my birthday versus the gorillas of destiny i was there live for that as well uh a sam the briscoes versus the young bucks i have a few of those matches on my list uh from 2016 to 2017 2018 uh couple of other matches I want to mention as well. Briscoes versus uh, Austin Aries and, Col uh, and Kota Ibushi from ROH Tag Wars 2008. That's up on YouTube as well. Uh, the rematch with the Mortar City Machine Guns in ROH, the return engagement in 2008. You had them versus the American Wolves for the at ROH Final Battle 2009 when they won the titles. Uh, you had them versus Kings of Wrestling, another great rivalry of the Briscoes. Kings of Wrestling and the Briscoes had a... <sighs> A fabulous rivalry in 2010. ROH Big Bang with the Kings of Wrestling won the ROH World Tag Team titles and went on a record longest reign of the ROH World Tag Team titles. Their rematch at ROH Defo 4 Dishonor 2010. Them versus the world's greatest tag team, ROH ninth anniversary. And go out of your way to watch the cosmetically pleasing promo, which actually explains why the Briscoes weren't signed to WWE back in uh all the way back in the beginning of their prime they explained that in the promo and i shared that on social media for antique world saying the four-way tag team scramble match in 2007 was really good uh we had johnny saying we even watched their first match versus briscoe's last year with her mom that was something wow that's crazy uh a saying the briscoe's versus the rascals uh he also brings up the briscoe's versus the hardy boys i've seen i was there live for that in roh as well 
uh, Ray saying, I got my ex to say the Briscoes were her favorite tag team. I said, it's either them or the Young Bucks. She replied, I just like to laugh at the Young Bucks outfits. They make me think of the of the 70s. Love the, <laughs> love the funny one there. Uh, Ace saying the Gorillas of Destiny matchups. Those matchups were great uh, back, back when, you know, AEW was already born when you needed some more interest in ROH. Briscoes were always there. You got Briscoes versus Homicide and Eddie Kingston they bring up in the chat as well. Uh, I have him on my list from 2010, another classic rivalry of the Briscoes. Briscoes versus All Night Express, Rent Titus and Kenny King. Some great matches, whether it be ROH Honor Take Center Stage or the Ladder War at ROH Death Before Dishonor 2011 at the Hammerstein Ballroom. A lot of these great matches at Hammerstein and I was there live for a lot of them. Uh, versus Red Dragon at ROH 11th Anniversary. Jay Briscoe versus Kevin Steen. I cannot express to you more. My favorite wrestling memory of being there live is that matchup and the finish to that matchup. Uh, Johnny bringing up our history. Jay versus Adam Cole at Final Battle 2014 at Terminal 5 was the only world title defense I saw live, I think. Underrated title reign, if you ask me. Yeah. Both of them, 2013 and 2014, both of his uh, title reigns are one of the uh, two of the greatest in uh, Ring of Honor history. Uh, the Briscoes versus Nakamura and Okada. That was the first time Johnny, uh, Top Guy JJ, the true heels really formed on that weekend. It was SummerSlam 2015 weekend, and we all went on a bus, a mega bus, over to Philly. And that was the main event of the show was the Briscoes versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Kazuka Okada. Uh, CM bringing up that promo established them as the talents that wwe were fools not to sign yes cosmetically pleasing is a classic a classic promo that everyone needs to go back and watch uh, i have jay versus mark from roh best in the world 2013 for during his first run for the roh world championship them versus matt hardy and mike bennett of the kingdom at roh best in the world 2014 i have the jay versus adam cole fight without honor at ROH Final Battle 2014, a hidden gem that wasn't played. I, I don't think it was played on the actual pay per view. I think this was only released to um, the fans that got the DVD. But Jay Briscoe versus Samoa Joe when Jay was the ROH World Champion back in 2015 incredible match that those two had 22 minutes hard hitting as hell i uh, got the okada and nakamura match here roh all-stars versus uh bullet club 10 10 man tag at roh global wars 2015 j versus j briscoe versus j lethal title versus title roh best in the world 2015 one of the best build-ups and it felt like the biggest match in roh history right there it was a classic uh the briscoe's versus his time splinters from ROH Field of Honor 2015. The Briscoes versus War Machine feud was another underrated one and really brought uh, the, the artists now known as the Viking Raiders to the next level. They were a good tag team. They were like brutes who just went out there. You know, you had Hanson who was so athletic. You had Roe who had the hard hitting strikes, the big knee to the face, but they got taken to the next level when they started feuding with the Briscoes. Uh, you have Briscoes versus War Machine from ROH glory by honor uh in 2016 and then uh, versus war machine at roh global wars 2016 i got briscoes versus the young bucks from roh final battle 2016 i was there live with johnny and the rest of the chill heels uh their rematch with the murder city machine guns roh 16th anniversary you got the uh briscoes versus the young bucks from roh best in the world 2018 that was one of my favorite matches of 2018 and i gotta go back and watch that one in fact uh the briscoes versus the addiction at roh death before dishonor 2016 the briscoes versus scu and the young bucks ladder war roh final battle 2018 the briscoes versus evil and sonata roh global wars 2018 in toronto briscoes versus lethal and gresham roh final battle 2019 the briscoes versus ogk roh death before dishonor 2020 and no 2020 21 and then ROH uh Briscoes versus OGK ROH Final Battle 2021, like was said earlier in the chat. And of course, all three matches with FTR from ROH Supercard of Honor last year, as well as the best two out of three falls match from ROH Death Before Dishonor 2022. And 
of course, the double dog collar match, which was in my top three matches of 2022 from ROH Final Battle 2022. And go out of your way to watch Briscoe's versus uh, Violin by Design from Impact Under Siege as well. Their Impact Wrestling run was very underrated. Man. Just going through that list, man, just brings me back to a time. Ray bringing up the Red and AJ matches from the early uh, ROH days that I said. Uh, you got they're bringing up some of Jay's classic title matches or great title matches. He defended it, the belt at the anniversary show in 2015 versus Elgin, Hansen, and Tommaso Ciampa. Tommaso Ciampa was another one to uh to to that I wanted to highlight here because he had a great story that he put up on his Twitter page first sharing the uh picture here, and then he said um, Jay Briscoe, the performer, was one of a kind. He was real, passionate, intense. He made you feel. During my time in ROH, I often found myself intimidated by Jay. He was a man, confident in his belief. I was a kid, but even while being intimidated, I was in awe of him. Nobody was cooler. Jay Briscoe and Roddy Piper, those are the two in my book. I would watch his promos on repeat. I'd watch the crowds react while the Briscoes entered a building. The energy shift was unreal. I had the honor of main eventing one ROA show in England with Jay. He was the champ. I was trying my hardest to prove myself. And in that moment, he made me feel like I was at his level. That's how good he was in the ring. Jay never wrestled down to his opponents. He brought them up to his level. Later in my career, I borrowed so much from Jay to develop my Blackheart persona. I never got the chance to tell him that or to thank him. If I did, he would have laughed at me anyways. <laughs> Very true. That's the type of person Jay was. And got to show love to WWE who had a touching, you know, uh, quick a shout out to Jay and send condolences to his family on social media uh, on during the broadcast of NXT by commentator Vic Joseph. You also had Triple H uh, putting out the tweet saying that Jay Briscoe was an incredible performer, created a deep connection with wrestling fans across the globe. My condolences to the family and friends of Jay Briscoe. You also had the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels saying on behalf of the at WWE NXT community, I would like to express my condolences to the Briscoe family for their loss you also had cody putting out a tweet saying i didn't interact much with him but upon meeting jay i instantly understood something about him his family was his everything all the love in the world to them this evening and of course i gotta highlight the the ftr ftr that classic rivalry last year you first you had cash putting out the tweet i've been in tears since i heard the news i just don't have the words rest in peace jay he also posted this picture of the briscoes at ftr backstage after one of their matches or before one of their matches you also had dax with a touching tweet saying i'm doing okay thanks everyone for checking on me i love you jay Great stuff. Another great tag team for WWE who sent their shout outs. Uh, they had the Usos who said RIP to the homie Jay Briscoe. Condolences to your family. Rest in paradise, Uso. And actually tagging Mark Briscoe as well. Send your love to Mark Briscoe at Sussex County Chicken on social media, on Twitter. Uh, you had Christopher Daniels, one another great rival of the Briscoes, whether it be with the addiction, the prophecy. Jay Briscoe versus Christopher Daniels itself. He says, Jay Briscoe was one of the toughest men I ever had the privilege to, of sharing a ring with, as well as being a tremendous brother, father, and man. I'm so happy to have had the opportunity to know him and wrestle him as often as I did. Rest in peace, Jay. I love you. Hashtag RIP Jay Briscoe. And then the final tweet I wanted to share with you guys was from Adam Old Baby, who is a, a another guy who showed so much love and had a great rivalry with Jay Briscoe. He says, I don't know what my life would be like without Jay Briscoe in it, and I don't want to know. You believed in me. You helped me. You treated me like family. There will never be another like you. I am so grateful to have known a man like you. I love you, Jay. Just so many touching tributes out there. Um, 
I wanted to, to wrap things up, but I did have a guest who was uh, going to join me. I know he's on Central Time, so I should have established that we were on Eastern Time with 3 p.m., but he's joining us now. For, uh, my good friend from over at Sports Keto Wrestling. You hear him all the time. He's one of the best uh, on there. Kev Kellum, thank you for joining me for uh, this this tribute to Jay Briscoe. I appreciate you, sir. Yeah, that 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 time zone difference always gets us, right? It's a lot different with India. It's a lot, lot different with our with our friends in India, uh, yes. but I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to to get a laugh in here under you know which, what I what, what I wish was better circumstances. Uh, yes, Andy, and uh, I know you had the privilege to actually interview uh, the Briscoes, yeah. so you know I would love to hear you know your thoughts of actually meeting them and then hearing the news yesterday. Yeah, I interviewed them back in July. Um, and it, and they, it was a short interview. It was only meant to be a few minutes, but, and I only, we had to get some different things in and, and I said, Hey, can I ask you about the Usos beforehand? I, I was, I didn't want to like do it to them on camera. And they're like, Oh, hell yeah. Just dream match stuff. And like, they knew exactly what I was asking. Like I would want to talk to them about a proverbial dream match that fans would want you to have. Cause they knew it was about the love of wrestling. You met these guys who were so genuine. Like I, I the word genuine has been used a lot to describe them. You, you hear this a lot when, um, the passage of life. You, someone that we all care about or is collectively beloved passes away. Everyone's just such a nice guy. So they were such a good person. She, she was such a great person. And with Jay, that's 100% true. Like, like, like that's, that's 100% true. And transgressions aside, and I know everyone brings up a, a single tweet, a single stupid thing that somebody does in their life. I don't think is definitive of who they are. And furthermore, when they, when they transform and become a different version, more refined and, and caring version of themselves as, as Jay did it's documented it's in, in the, in the court of life, not, you know, th this, this guy definitely made right with other people who he could have wronged with, with those words. And he suffered for it. And that, that was, that was a part for it. It was like, he suffered and his brother suffered for it. And they were yeah. the greatest tag team that never wrestled in WWE. Like and they're the greatest tag team that never wrestled in a WCW or you know before their time type stuff. Like, but in terms of the last twenty years, they're one of the best tag teams of all time. You know, and beyond that, I mean, I'm talking like Legion of Doom, all that sort of stuff. You can consider that. And I kind of like had had that in the back of my head. Like they're one of the greatest of all time. I'm just like casually getting to talk to them, and and the fact that they were so okay with that question about the Usos made me in my interaction with them. Right. These guys know they're great, but also understand what they what service they have to the industry and what service they have to the fans. And and asking a question like, yeah, they could say, like, no, no, thank you. We don't want to talk about it. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But it was fact that they were like, yes, let's let's yeah, that was so fun. Yeah, why not? Let's talk about it. You know, and like that that candor and that candid nature um that they embrace so much, they are what they are. Like th these were rednecky chicken farmers who worked hard and provided for their family and were tough as nails. And if you crossed them, they were going to punch you sideways. <laughs> like, and, and that was their gimmick. That's who they were. And, and, and when you have that um, as a team, uh, I think you have to appreciate it. And that's what all, all the greats in wrestling kind of are that they're a little bit of who they are with the volume turned all the way up. You know, some are just, you know, out there, the undertaker is not a dead guy. Right. But I mean, there's a part of him that's in that. There's a part of Stone Cold that's in that. The Briscoes were all that and even more. Uh, and um, I just feel so much for his family and, and the unfortunate things we've learned today um, about how uh, his daughters and, and, and other people that it's publicly shared information are, are being affected. Um, and I just feel for them and, and hope people can rally behind them in all the positive ways that you can. You know, I mean, amazing matches. I mean, I can just talk about it as a fan. I got to see them. Um, many, many times because Ring of Honor would do loops in Chicago. And yeah. I would see them in Chicago. And I saw them at the Frontier Fieldhouse. And I was texting. With, I've been texting with people all day about it. Uh, and we were sharing matches that we saw them live at, like where it's like right before HD. And it, it's just aged enough, like that pre-HD Ring of Honor stuff. And yeah. uh, they had Ladder Wars in 07, um, them, and, them and Punk and Colt Cabana, and many different, the Age of the Fall debut. They were a big part of that. You know, yeah. I think it's also worth noting. It's like everyone thinks of them as this team that won a lot of a lot of stuff. They beat a lot of people. They made a lot of people. The Briscoes. Uh, I, I've been talking. 
I, I stress during this one that people need to go back and really appreciate what they did for Kevin Steen and El Generico. Yeah. That's one of the greatest tag team feuds in my mind because it, they took some guys that were virtual unknowns in 2007 unknowns. and brought them up to their level and made them top guys in on the U.S. independent scene. Like, it, it can be stress into words that if it wasn't for the Briscoes, Kevin Steen doesn't become Kevin Owens and El Generico doesn't become Sami Zayn. It's also worth noting, and this isn't like a shot at anyone. At one point, Ring of Honor is bigger than Impact in terms of like yeah. TV share, ticket sales, uh, fan influence. And that's about 10, 12 years ago. Briscoes are a huge part of that. Like them as an act, them as a draw, them as a, a character that you can mechanically build stuff around. And this is me talking now on the wrestling production side of things and working with people in independent wrestling, not doing the journalism stuff. You need acts that you can build the show around. And even if they're not the top act, they have to be the one that fans can believe when they pay a ticket that if someone beats them, they're even better. And I, I bring up that logic because they were like I, I, all those things that you fundamentally see about them were, were so true. Uh, and it's just such a such a, a sad tragedy. It really, really is. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, the weird thing is life is precious and you don't know how many more days you got. And you just got to count your blessings as much as you can. I, I absolutely feel for his family. I don't have children. I know I said I know you do. And I just absolutely feel for his family in this situation. Yeah, that's what I've been saying the whole thing. And, you know, we're wrapping things up here that definitely the wrestling world just has to come together and pray for his daughters. Uh, hopefully we can get some, you know, good news in regard to their condition and there mm -hmm. can be some some type of, like, you know, so solace in that and that uh, yeah. at least at least they get to continue to kind of live out the legacy of their of their father uh kev i want to thank you so much for thank you for joining me. thanks However, for getting me in here at the end man i appreciate it I, absolutely I, i'm i'm thankful that you were able to you know at least come in and join us at the end here let the people know where they can follow you and i think you're also doing a tribute over on uh sk wrestling as well right? yeah we're, we're working on some stuff we're going to do some pre-produced things so we're just going to work on some things over time and i was going to talk to you about this i got to talk to you about like matches we want to all oh, the best the bad the ones you got to see from the briscoes now because a lot of people are going to be doing that now and i i'm, yeah. I'm, and I'm at, this isn't like oh good look at our list no 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 this is like I hear about these guys. I feel for them. I want to know about it. And when um, uh, the great Mr. Howard Masawa passed away, someone told me like, these are matches you used to see. And that's the yeah. same type of fan conversation. So we're looking into that. That'll be rolling out at some point this week. And then we have, you know, everything, everything else going on in the world of wrestling. We have a whole bunch of other stuff like that too. So uh, we have two different channels on YouTube, sports key to wrestling with our lists. And then we have wrestle binge, which is our show. That's kind of more personally based. We have Vince Russo on there. We have Dutch Mattel. You, you joined Dutch as well. And smack talk. Uh, those shows are up there as well. So just a whole bunch of stuff coming down the pike, uh, you know, seven days a week. Wrestling never ends. Absolutely. And just wanted to, you know, Thank everyone in live chat. You guys have been great kind of showing uh, showing your memories, great matches that uh, Jay Briscoe has had. And we'll continue to celebrate uh, Jay Briscoe the rest of this week as we get into, you know, I got True Hill Heat on Saturday, 11.05 a.m. Eastern time. We're going to be doing more celebration of Jay Briscoe, as you see here with the thumbnail. Thank you for Romeo for getting that uh, that done for us. So we're going to be showing more, much more love for Jay Briscoe the rest of this week here on the channel. We got uh, Elite Heat watching AEW Dynamite, and I'm sure we're going to see some tributes to Jay Briscoe on tonight's show, especially with, you know, Young Bucks being a, a classic rival of them. We They have a tag team match tonight. We're definitely going to see that as well. But uh wanted to leave everybody with one thing, one thing that may may make everybody smile or have a tear in their eye. But I, I wanted to end things off with Jay and his daughter, uh, their cheerleading routine that they put up on the Ring of Honor uh web uh social media page during the pandemic. So thank you to Jay Briscoe. Thank you to the Briscoe brothers, the greatest tag team of my generation that brought my love back for professional wrestling when I was a teenager. Thank you so much, Jay Briscoe. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kev, for joining me for this. Them boys. Them boys. Reach for the sky, boy.